Over 42 million Americans are now claiming unemployment. And what I just wanna say real quick is that that doesn't even count the workers that are not employees or were not employees. Maybe they were 1099 contractors and they can't necessarily claim unemployment benefits. Or maybe they were a full-time worker, but now they're a part-time worker, so they still can't claim unemployment benefits because they're technically still employed, right? Well, I just want you to remember that like 42 million is already a massive number, but it doesn't take into consideration those two other buckets that I talked about. So when you think about like overall spending that Americans are going to be doing in 2020 and 2021, I would guarantee you that is going to be a lot lower because of these two factors. Now let's go ahead and jump here into what CNBC says. Uh, CNBC has got this massive section on jobless claims, first of all, so check it out. They got a bunch of interesting articles in here. But the first one I wanna show you is jobless claims total unemployment level worse than expected. So um, we are getting a little bit better. Like uh, today is Thursday, they just reported the, the weekly numbers and it is 1.8 million. Um, let's see, they, they estimated 1.7 million, but it was 1.8 million. Well, last Thursday, I think it was a little over 2 million. So we are going down. Um, that's good, I guess, but I don't think those numbers are gonna continue to go down because I do believe more companies are gonna start filing for bankruptcy. I do also believe that we are going to have a second wave, especially with all these large group gatherings that we have. And when we do have that second wave, that's going to potentially force a lockdown and potentially more job losses will occur. So crazy stuff. Um, but. As far as like going back to lower spending with all of these jobs being lost, it's it's not going to show right now because right now the market is just blowing up. Like it's like 3,100 over 3,100 for the S&P 500. So job loss claims is a leading indicator which means that it's not going to necessarily show right now the actual market with job loss claims. So let me show you this just real quick. Uh, leading indicators for investors, okay? Many investors pay attention to the same leading indicators as economists, but they tend to focus on indicators directly related to the stock market. One example of a leading indicator of, the, of interest to investors is the number of job loss claims and the US Department of Labor, what they provide. Um, so it definitely is a leading indicator and not a, I think that they call it lagging indicator, um, but it's going to show up later in this year, once a lot of those unemployed people trim back their spending, and then we start to see these big public companies reporting their earnings and reporting much lower earnings, I believe the third and fourth quarter will show much lower earnings than what last year showed for third and fourth quarter. And that's again why I do believe the stock market is way overvalued and is much, it's due for a big correction, a big pullback. All right, so this article right here is saying that this economist says that 42% of the job losses will be permanent. I mean, that's that's huge. If we actually do the numbers, 42 million, for easy math, I'm just gonna say 20 million of those people will be permanent because you know 42 million people that are unemployed is still growing. Um, so for 42% of that to be permanent. I mean, think about it from the employer's perspective, right? Like if I have a thousand employees and I lay off, let's say a, a, uh, two thirds of that. So let's say I have a third left, okay? I'm gonna try and push those third of employees as much as I can, trying to put as much work on their plate as possible before going and hiring and bringing on a lot more risk. Because every time they hire somebody, they're increasing their risk because the business that they're getting is not necessarily coming back in droves. It's trickling back in, thank God for that, but it's not coming back right away. So why is the employer gonna go ahead and just hire back on their entire team that they had in the past when the business is not just coming all 100% back right away? They're gonna try and stretch their current employees and load up their current employees, try to get their current employees to do twice the amount of work for the same amount of pay or even less pay. Maybe they make their current employees part-timers and then they try to get them to do twice the amount of work. This is happening, okay? Don't try to ignore this. This is legit happening that employers are trying to do this. They're trying to stretch their dollars and it doesn't exactly mean that just because 
all those people got laid off that they're all just gonna come back right away. So you gotta think about like real life example, like if an employer is trying to, you know, play it safe, um, then they're going to maybe hire on one or two or maybe none and they try to just reduce their expenses in other ways as far as getting rid of office expenses and just trying to maximize the amount or you know, they could maximize the amount of in-house employees that they have or outsourcing that work and hiring people from overseas. You know, once you have a remote worker, then you kind of look at it like, well, if, I'm, if I have a remote team, why am I gonna hire somebody remote in the US when I could potentially just hire somebody remote in the Philippines or in India, you know? So I really, I mean, 42% right here seems high. That seems like a way high estimate. I've seen other people being interviewed on CNBC and they're saying like 70% of those jobs are not gonna come back. So, I mean, as a business owner, you, American labor is very expensive. It's like some of the most expensive labor. Me personally, I have a full remote team for my Amazon marketing agency. By the way, if you are running an Amazon business and you wanna work with me, you wanna schedule a call with me, head over to www.evolvemedia.agency. We can talk about how we blow up, how we can blow up your Amazon uh, business and get you some more sales. Anyway, back to this. Um, so I'm going to personally try to hire cheaper labor out there. And if I've already been relieved of my, you know, two thirds of my workforce in this example, then why would I necessarily want to go back? Yes, they're already trained, but an employee is so much more expensive than a 1099 contractor that I hire in the Philippines. I don't have to pay tax on that 1099 contractor. I don't have to pay a bunch of extra benefits. And when everybody is, you know, being remote, I'm kind of incentivized to hire somebody remote in another country and not make them employees, especially when I have a big risk with loading up my plate with employees. Because if a second wave comes out, which by the way, let's look at the numbers here. Uh, we're at one point, let's say roughly 1.9 million cases in the US and the daily case amount is climbing back up there. It's uh, 20,000 flirting around 20 to mid 20s new cases every single day, I'm going to want to limit my risk, right? So instead of hiring an employee that I'm kind of committing to, because it's not as easy to fire an employee, I'm going to want to hire somewhat of a temporary worker, 1099 remote worker in another uh, country. So just keep that in mind is that this may start to happen, which further adds to um, these jobs not coming back, with for, which further adds to lack of consumer spending, which means lower revenues, which means that the current businesses that are public right now, and we're looking at the stock market just high, close to uh, the, the all-time highs before all this madness happened, it just, it doesn't look good. It kind of makes me think that a, a crash is definitely around the corner and you know, how much steroids can the Fed pump into the market at this point? I mean, they keep pumping, pumping, pumping. I mean, you think that they just have unlimited money? Like, I, I'm nervous of what's gonna happen when we do face, you know, and, and we gotta pay the toll of all this steroids that we are borrowing right now, right? The Fed is pumping all these steroids in, they're just creating it out of thin air. Well, are we gonna have to pay for those steroids later? I mean, what what is it gonna look like? So, I don't know, I'm, I'm nervous about that. I, I'm nervous about, if the, if the Fed has just been able to pump all these steroids, like, do they stop? What happens when they do stop? What's, I don't know. Anyway, this article right here, um, jobless claims rise at a slower pace. Um, so, you know, there are people that are optimistic. I am optimistic about this. I just, I'm trying to be real as well. And like, as a business owner, I feel like if they're gonna hire back some people, it's gonna be remote and over overseas for when they can. But here's another, this is actually more sad than unemployment is that there are part-time workers who have been forced in, there are also part-time workers who've been forced into part-time work from full-time work and would like to work full time, that increased by 5 million in April, which is another 3% of the labor force. So like this whole, you know, we, we get our number of 42 million and we wrap that around our head. And, and But that number is small compared to what really the number of people that are hurting financially really is, right? When you think about part-time workers, when you think about the 1099 contractors that are not necessarily getting awesome employee benefits, there's gonna be a lot of contraction that goes on, and I'm even one of them. I haven't necessarily felt an income contraction because we work with a lot of Amazon sellers, so a lot of the Amazon sellers have seen a boom in their business, so we've kept a lot of our clients happy, and, and they're happy, and we're all making money, and it's great, 
But when I see that the market is gonna go through a contraction, when I see people are being unemployed, I myself am becoming more conservative with my money because I'm like, well shoot, what is going to happen? Maybe I need to scale back a little bit even though I don't necessarily have to. That's what other people are thinking. These these people that are, you know, I would, I would consider myself in like the middle upper income level area and, and those same people that are middle up that are comfortable, that have a good retirement, that have a good amount of cash, I guarantee you they're not spending like they were. They are pulling back. The people that are losing their jobs, I would hope that they're being smart with their money and pulling back on their spending. So I'm just giving you a heads up, you know, jobless claims right now, it seems like we're getting lower in our numbers, but if this second wave comes back, uh, you know, this chart right here, it looks like, like if this was a, a stock market chart, it looks like we're consolidating right now at these levels. And with all the group gatherings that are happening, it looks like these are looking ready to start building back up again, especially when we start to get into those colder times like um, the fall and things like that. So I don't mean to be negative, but just wanna give you a heads up on how jobs are looking. And for the people that say that the economy is not the stock market, and it, it's not directly correlated, but it is indirectly correlated, right? Like if the economy takes a dump, people are not gonna be spending as much money, which means these public companies are not gonna be making as much money, so they shouldn't be valued as high as they are. But anyway, thanks for watching. Hit that thumbs up button, leave a comment below if you have any questions. Let's chat it up there, and uh, I'll catch you in the next one.